Today's show is going to be a review of the Diptyque DP140 Mark II panel speaker. It's a planar magnetic speaker. And I'm emphasizing that because, well, most of us have never actually lived with a panel speaker, a dipole speaker. We live with box speakers. They're by far the most popular type of speaker. And in a box speaker, the drivers are arrayed uh, on the front baffle and they project sound forward. That's the way we hear music at home for most of us. Now a dipole speaker he projects sound forward and back. So what's coming out of the front of the speaker and the back of the speaker are more or less the same sound. So they energize the room in a completely different way than box speakers do. And I think, I believe that panel speakers sound in that sense more like real instruments filling a room than box speakers do. Now, there are some great box speakers and I'm not putting them down. I'm just defining what the difference is, what makes panel speakers, and not just uh, planar magnetic speakers, but also electrostatic speakers and open baffle speakers like the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s that are my reference speaker. They project sound forward and back. And let me tell you a little bit about Diptyque. It's a French company. They design and build their speakers in France. They have a small crew <laughs> and they basically hand build all of their speakers. And actually, I'm going to show you some pictures of the construction of the speakers. And actually, here's the guy. You guys are interested in crossover networks because we usually can't see them. Well, here's, here's what the Diptyque uh, DP140 Mark II crossover looks like. And here is the gentleman who actually hand builds all of these crossovers for all of their speakers, right? And here is some of the production work of building the panels and applying the ribbons to the panels. Um, they sent me these pictures and I'm grateful because it kind of takes the mystery out of it. But the point here is right up front is that box speakers and panel speakers are doing different things. And I'm a fan of this type of speaker. So I just wanted to, you know, lay the groundwork for this review and why it's special. Now, it is in many ways similar to MagnaPan speakers uh, and eminent technology speakers that I reviewed earlier, well, last year. Uh, but this sound, the DP140 Mark II, is actually taking it further out. It's a much higher performance type of speaker. And it is a more expensive speaker, and I will get to the price soon enough. So the 140 Mark II is a two-way speaker. It has a 21 0.5 inch ribbon tweeter, but it's a dipole ribbon. There's just as much sound coming out of the back of the tweeter as the front, and the magnets for this tweeter are neodymium. Now, the mid range woofer uh, planar magnetic part of the speaker has magnets front and rear. It's a, called a push pull design, and I've certainly never had a magnet pan in this room with push pull uh, magnets, magnets in the front and magnets in the back. And the advantage of having front and rear magnets is that the membrane itself is under greater control because of this arrangement with front and rear magnets. The crossover, oh, and the crossover between that mid woof and the ribbon tweeter occurs at 1.6K. Here are the complete specifications for the speaker. The warranty runs to three years. Now, here's the other thing that's pretty interesting. The, these these drivers, the ribbon and the planar magnetic panel, are user replaceable. So if the worst happens, you don't have to ship the speakers back to France. You can actually do it yourself or have your dealer do it for you to replace the ribbon or the planar magnetic panel. The design of the panel itself is pretty interesting. It's a sandwich of two millimeter thick steel front surface and rear surface, and in between is MDF, and that supports the ribbon and also the planar magnetic driver on that MDF platform. Hey, let's talk about price. This is an expensive speaker. It is handcrafted in France. The price of the DP140 Mark II is $17,000 a pair. But this is the middle of the line. The most affordable Diptyque speaker is the DP77. That one sells for $5,000 a pair. Now, I just want to take a moment 
to talk about setup. Now, like most dipole speakers, I had these speakers around three feet, about a meter away from the wall behind them. But the distance between the speakers was about 10 feet, center to center, and they were about 10 feet from me. So it was an equilateral triangle. But I stress the about, because I kept moving these speakers. I felt like every time I moved them, I'd hear a different sound. <laughs> and I've done this a lot over the years, you know, reviewed a lot of speakers. I'm used to moving speakers around, but this speaker, well, to get it right was more challenging. I was getting them closer together, and I was getting closer to them, spreading them further apart, changing toe in, and they do need to be towed in to the listening position. But every slight change changed their sound. Now, I would, the ones that I liked, when I came to a new position and I liked it, I would mark it on the floor with masking tape. But the point is, uh, I just couldn't stop moving them <laughs> because I kept hearing different sounds, which was kind of unnerving because I said, I want to get the best out of these speakers, and I'm not sure what that is. So I'm just throwing that out there that with any good speaker, you have to have patience and play around and find what happens. But I thought that I'd get to the end, the, the final position, faster because this is my job, and I reviewed many dipole speakers in this room. But for whatever reason, the 140 Mark IIs were just, let's say, more challenging. Now, these are very powerful sounding speakers. They make a lot of bass, quantity and quality. And they go down to about 40 hertz in my room. Uh, and then there was the top end. That ribbon tweeter is remarkably clear and extended and pure and low in distortion. It is a joy. You just hear into the high frequencies of recordings with rare precision, rare purity, and with all that goes excitement. This is a very vivid, alive sounding speaker. Now, of course, the downside to all that is that, the well, the, the upside is that great recordings sound better than you ever imagined. And then, of course, the downside to that is bright recordings are really bright. <laughs> and harsh recordings and compressed recordings can be that much more apparent. Their liabilities be can become more apparent with this speaker than with most. So if you tend to listen to record, you know, recordings, that are pop recordings or mass recordings that are very compressed and messed with and stuff, this is probably not the right speaker for you. If you listen to classical music, if you listen to a lot of acoustic music, or just good, well-recorded rock music, uh, yeah, this speaker will really set you back in your seat because you will be amazed by what you hear. So unless otherwise noted, the primary amplifier that I used over the course of this review was the Gato PWR222 monoblocks. 250 watt class AB amplifiers, absolutely incredible. Great match with these speakers. One other, oh, one other thing I have to tell you about is that this is a sit down speaker. They sound best when you're sitting down. When you're standing and your ears are above the height of the tweeter, the high frequencies start to roll off. So if that's important to you to listen when you're standing up or walking around, um, yeah, this speaker's top end will get soft. Anyway, I don't find that a big liability because usually when I'm actually paying attention and listening, I'm sitting down. As for specifics, I do want to talk a bit about how the 140 Mark IIs did with the Allman Brothers at the Fillmore East. And I got to say, you know, when you're at a live concert, before the concert starts and those first couple of songs, you sense or I sense that the air in the room and the concert hall is charged. There's this electricity in the air of excitement of seeing one of your favorite bands. And here I am listening to the Allman Brothers of the Fillmore East and I have that sense of charged air. It's that sense of being there as this music is happening for real. And the way these speakers reproduce the sound of electric guitars, that edge, that bite, that intensity, yep, 140 Mark II does that extremely well. Oh, you know, and the other thing with the, with the Phil Maurice record, yeah, you could almost smell the pot filling the concert hall. The next thing I played was this one, Kronos String Quartet Plays the Music of Philip Glass. 
And with a recording like this, you can hear the space between the instruments in, in this case, in a recording studio. Gorgeous recording and the, the vibrancy of the music and, and the playing was so perfect, so well done. Moving along, I played an audiophile recording, a Chesky recording that was done without dynamic range compression or equalization, and it's David Chesky's Jazz in the New Harmonic. And uh, this is a recording for piano, David's on piano, and there's saxophone, trumpet, bass, drums, and it's a you are there sort of thing. And I played this one at mm, more or less realistically loud levels and that sense of real dynamics, being, this being an uncompressed recording, was really breathtaking, how these, these speakers could track the large and small dynamics all happening at the same time. And the bass player's fingers on the strings, again, you could almost, I could almost see that in my mind's eye, and that was fantastic. And I just loaded on a lot of complimentary things about the sound of this speaker. So now I want to balance it out a bit. And that is to say, this is a high transparency, ultra clear transducer. And that also means that you hear <laughs> the good, but also the bad, and sometimes the ugly in recordings. In other words, recordings that are too bright will definitely be too bright over this speaker. <laughs> and recordings that are compressed and harsh and nasty sounding, you will hear all of those nasties very, very clearly, which is not necessarily a good thing, you know? So what I'm saying here is, is that yes, it's a fantastic speaker with great sounding recordings, but if you play it with bright recordings, the sound will be excessively bright. And if you play music that's very compressed and harsh, it will sound very compressed and harsh. So you gotta figure out what side of the street you're on here. In other words, if you like music, that is well recorded, that makes up a big chunk of your music collection in, on CD or LP or streaming or whatever, this could be the right speaker for you. But if you listen to a lot of nasty, very pop, very processed music, that may not be the best fit for you. The DP140 Mark II may not be the right speaker for a lot of people who have, let's say, broader musical taste. Now I did tame the sound somewhat, a bit, when I used the Carver Ram 285 tube power amplifier. That did, to some degree, smooth out the sound enough that less perfect recordings could, you know, get by. That's one way to deal with this. Um, but when you're listening to great recordings, the, the separation of the instruments is really spectacular. You really feel like you can isolate each one as you would if you were close to the instruments, because that's the thing. You're hearing the microphones picking up those sounds. Like you're basically hearing the music from the microphones positioning. Now, I gotta move on to the sound staging. Again, this sound stage, the DP140 Mark II sound stage is effortlessly large. And yet, with, with the right kind of recordings, the focus and of each instrument in the sound stage is as good as I've ever heard. Really so right there. And you really feel like you're hearing the music from the microphone's position, because which is after all how the recording was made in the first place, right? It wasn't just filling the room. There were microphones on instruments, and you sense the positions of those microphones. Now, I, I want to take a quick uh, pause here and remind everybody that about six months ago, I reviewed another Planet Magnetic speaker, ones by uh, two of them actually, Eminent Technology, the LFT-8B and the LFT-8C. That had Planet Magnetic mid-range, ribbon tweeters, but instead of uh, Planet Magnetic woofer, they used cone woofers, an eight inch woofer. And a lot of what I'm getting from this one, from the, from the Diptyque, I was getting then from the Eminent Technology. I was very excited about doing that review and that speaker is about a little less than one third the price of the Diptyque. But the Eminent Technology speakers uh, were smaller sounding speakers. They could not fill the room as completely. The bass wasn't as powerful. They were not as dynamic as the uh, DP140 Mark II. So, but they are a lot less expensive. So they are definitely worth considering. Yes, I did find 
uh, myself playing these speakers louder than I normally do because I was having fun. They're, they just get so exciting when you play them loud with good recordings. On the other hand, played at quieter late night levels, uh, no, the DP140 isn't at its best, but that's true of other speakers of its type, of other panel speakers. Now, when I did come time to compare <laughs> the DP140 Mark II with the Pure Audio Projects, the differences were clear cut. A, <laughs> the Pure Audio Project, which is about $10,000 less expensive, was definitely the more dynamic speaker of the two. Yes, the Pure Audio Project speaker is more dynamically alive than the Diptyque speaker. And there's, it has a warmer mid-range and much less high-frequency information. And the bass coming from their 15-inch woofers uh, is just more luscious sounding, more of, <laughs> it just has more of that thing. But there's no comparison in terms of resolution and detail and all that sort of transparency. The Diptyque is a far more transparent, more see-through sort of sound than I ever get from the Pure Audio Project speakers. So now I'm ready to do it. So Steve, what do you really think of the Diptyque DP140 Mark II speakers? I think, well, more than any other speaker I've ever heard in this room, they play the room. They fill the room with music and sound like nothing I've ever heard. The drama of the music, that liveness, that energy of the original event, whether it's live or in a studio, it comes through more completely with these speakers than most. Now we can move on to, <laughs> and now it's time for, you know what, you love it, the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Now, this is impressive. David sent in these remarkable pictures. He lives in central New Jersey, and he has three systems in one, we'll get to that shortly, and a lot of musical instruments and guitar amplifiers and stuff, so he's the real deal. Thank you, David. Anyway, his turntable for all three systems is a VPI Classic, and the cartridge is a Soundsmith Zephyr. The preamplifier is a Macintosh MX110. Now, for system number one, uh, he has a Macintosh MC30, actually has two of those, and he's driving clip shorts. <laughs> now, at the other end of the audio spectrum, for system number two, he has a very opposite speaker, Quad ESL 57s, electrostatic speakers, and they are being driven by Quad 2. There's actually two of them. Now, the third system is a headphone system, and the amp is a Lafigo 339 dual mono. It's an OTL tube amplifier. And that's plugged into the Mac MX110 tape output. David has a bunch of headphones, Sennheiser HD6XX, HD600, Biodynamic DT90, 600 ohm version. Uh, and wow, I mean, it's just, there's a lot to take in here. Thank you, David. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. Thank you for hanging in there. This was quite the ride today. <laughs> this speaker really put me through some changes. Anyway, if you like these kinds of reviews and also the more affordable real world stuff, please consider supporting this channel through my Patreon. To do so, super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. I'm planning on going to the Axpona show in Chicago in April this year. And I, have, I may be doing a live event there, you know, me talking. Um, so that might make you want to go there and maybe we can hang out a little bit and talk. Anyway, so that's all in the future. But right now, if you dig the channel and you like this kind of review, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you have yet to do so. And with that, yeah, I could say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching and I really do Hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.